Hello everyone. We are just going to jump right into this week's live. Welcome to the All the Things Tote So Long. We are doing weekly lives for the So Long. It's going to be three weeks, three weeks long. So today is the first day of the first week of the So Long and I'm so excited that some of you are joining us here. But I'm just going to jump right in so that when people watch the replay of this, because I'm going to save this um, so that people don't have to watch a, a big long intro. So welcome. Um, we're going to talk about uh, this week. Our, our goal is to collect supplies and to do the cutting. So just make sure all the pieces are cut out. So pretty simple. Hopefully you guys have most of this stuff in your uh, stash so you can just, you know, gather the little things that you need. Um, so I'm just going to talk about some of the supplies required and answer some questions that have been left in some of the posts from this week. And if you have questions here, just answer and I will, um, try to get all of your questions answered. So first thing we're going to talk about is fabric, fabric choices. Um, I've had people ask if canvas is an appropriate, um, fabric to use. And absolutely, I'm actually using a canvas for the sample that I'll be making with you guys this time. And I'll show you, this is my, this is the canvas that I have picked. And I picked this up at Sotopia. It's cleaning supply bottles. Isn't that so cute? It's a Japanese fabric canvas. So this is what I'm going to be using. So canvas is a great option for this bag. I've made multiple ones in canvas already. And then I've also made it in quilting cottons also. So um, I love the quilting cotton as well. I think it's a great, great choice. So, um, and the really big thing I wanted to talk about with fabric choice is directional fabric, because this is a question I've gotten so many times since the pattern's been released and people are like, the pattern's wrong. This, this can't be right. And I understand why people think that, but I want you to know that if you're following the instructions in the pattern about directional prints, the instructions are right <laughs> because I've made it a bunch of times with those directions. So I just really quickly wanted to go over that. If you're using a directional print, um, this, this print is actually, let's see, I'll show you with this because I grabbed this. This is like a canvas, a uh, cotton and steel canvas. If you were using this for your bag, for instance, um, you're gonna, the instructions will say, it will give you a direct, I'm not gonna mention measurements, but it will give you a uh, cut so many inches off this way. And then you're gonna cut the fold off and then you have two pieces and you're gonna just like put them like this. We're gonna pretend like this is already two pieces cut. We're gonna put them like this and sew the seam at the bottom. So we have fabric going out this way and fabric going out this way. Um, the thing that confused people in the directions is the width, the measurement is less than the large size bag, but the the direction is the opposite way they're thinking of it. So I don't know if that confused you all more, but if you have questions, please let me know. But I promise the instructions are right, so just trust the instructions. You'll cut the fold off and then put the two pieces together um, for the bag panel. This is just for the, the bag body piece, the main piece, right? So this... This bag right here is pieced directionally. You can see I seamed it right at the bottom. And you'll wanna do that all before you quilt it because um, once you quilt it, you can't change the direction of the fabric. You know that, but anyway, so that was just the one thing I wanted to mention on directional fabrics if you're using them. And they're definitely, like don't, don't steer away from them because they're fun. They can be really fun. Will the large size hold uh, art bin satchel? Um, I don't know. I actually, let's see, I have an art bin here, but I don't know if it's the same art bin. Here's an art bin that I have that holds my webbing. We can throw that in and see. This is probably bigger than what you're thinking, but it does hold this big art bin. This is actually the medium size here. So I wonder if I can throw this sideways and see. Um, so that would hold that too. Um, yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what size art bin you have, but looks like it would um, hold that. That's the only art bin I have, so. Um, loving the striping on the Tula toe. Awesome. This is fabric. This is the striped fabric from Tula's uh, Everglow collection. I love it. I'm actually working on a whole series of bags from 
uh, Everglow because I am partial to African animals. I love Africa and so I've collected the giraffe and the elephants and the lions and I'm making a whole series of bags. So this is one of the first ones that I have finished from that. Just a personal project, just for fun. I'll be sure to share about it when I finish it, but it's like in the background of all the other sewing I have to do. So anyways, hi Anne, thanks for saying hi. Um, anyways, okay, so fabric. So yes, canvas, yes, cotton, um, and yes to directional. Don't steer clear of directional. Um, the other thing, I the next uh, item on the supply list I wanna talk about is soft and stable. Um, so if you've never used soft and stable, soft and stable is a foam interfacing. Um, it's about a quarter inch thick foam. And this has um, like a soft fabric lining on both sides. I uh, love soft and stable. I worked for Annie for years. Um, and so I am very partial to soft and stable. I know there's other products on the market you can definitely use. So I wanted to mention those also. <laughs> Uh, there is a product called Bozel, and I know that they have a fusible one, so if you want to try doing the fusible one, you can. I don't love, I'm going to just tell you why I like soft and stable best, but I'm not, I'm not judging anyone for any choice that they do. So, um, so you, you can iron it fusible, the Bozel is the fusible, so you can iron it. But sometimes I feel like it gives you, Annie used to say cellulite. That was a term she used to use, and I, I always laughed when she said that. Because it kind of ripples your fabric a little bit. That's why I don't love the fusible. Um, because I don't love the, the look that it sometimes gets. Um, you can use the Pellon foam as well. The only thing I would mention about that is it's only, I think, 20 inches wide. So that may work for this project. You'll have to look at the measurements of the pieces you need and then the yardage requirement may be different because soft and stable comes 58 inches wide. So, um, and I find that Pellon is a little bit more slick and it doesn't feel as easy to like hold in place for what I felt of it. So that's one of the things I like about the soft and stable is I feel like this isn't fusible, but I feel like when you iron it on, it kind of has a little bit of a grip to it. So um, I feel like that's really valuable in uh, using soft and stable to quilt. You can use like 505 spray, or I really like the June Taylor uh, basting spray as well. The fusible, I don't know exactly what it's called, like a fusible temporary adhesive spray. I think that's what it's called. So I like, you can use that. I've used that a few times as well, just to try it out. And I think it's great, but I'm kind of just traditional and I pin it, I iron it, I iron the fabric in place and pin, and I, I've really liked it. Um, so you could try batting. I've, I've heard people using two layers of batting just to give the bag more structure. You can see these bags, these have nothing in them right here and they're standing up on their own. So that's why I like using soft and stable versus batting because it gives more structure to the project. Can you make a bag more of a patchwork rather than one piece of fabric? Okay, we're gonna talk about patchwork at some point in the video. So, um, but I won't, I won't, I'll come back to it. Um, so, soft and stable. That's my first choice. That's what I recommend. That's why it's on the pattern requirement list because this is my favorite product. It's my favorite product to use for bags. Okay, I wanted to talk about long arming really fast. I know not everyone has a long arm, um, but some people have long armors that will quilt yardage for them. Uh, like we quilt yardage for people here um, on our long arms often. I carry soft and stable on the big roll because they have it in 15 yard rolls. And it's, I love that because then I don't have to um, iron out the creases from the packaging. So when I'm long arming it, that's perfect for me. Um, so if you have a long arm yourself and you want some tips about long arming it on your own machine, um, what I would recommend is buying a little bit more lining fabric. Uh, a lot of long armors will um, want you to have a larger lining. Like right when you send your quilt, your backing fabric has to be bigger than your, um, your top, right? So it will go the same for loading fabric like if you're just loading fabric. So I would just say grab an extra quarter yard of your lining if you're gonna load it on your long arm. 
And then other than that, you can quilt it exactly the same. It's exactly the same to quilt as a quilt. So um, if you have any other specific questions about long arming soft and stable, please, please ask. We use the 9014 needles, which is what I use on almost every quilt, or 96, I think I use 16 size. I can't remember. But if you wanna know what size of needle we use, you can send me a DM or, or ask in the comments and uh, we'll answer you back later. Um, so we use the same needle, same thread. I don't change any settings on my, my machine when I'm long arming. Um, this sew along, I'm going to be sewing mine with you guys on a domestic machine because I know not everybody has um, or a long arm in their basement. So um, we'll be quilting it on our domestic sewing machine. So if you're worried about quilting it, we're gonna share all the quilting tips next week. Next week, we're gonna cover quilting. So, um, but I just wanted to mention that for yardage requirement purposes, if you are going to um, put it on your long arm, just grab a little bit of extra lining, uh, lining fabric. Okay, and handles, the handle requirements. Okay, so we're gonna talk about webbing. So I wrote this pattern so that if you are using, if you want to, like I wrote it so if you have fabric and you want to cover your handles, you can do that. You're going to just like make your tube and turn it inside out and then you pull in a polypro strapping. So this is polypro strapping. This is like a plasticky material. It's pretty slick. It pulls through the tube really easily. Um, and I love making my handles with fabric and it's probably just because I like adding lots of prints um, I feel like there's always lots more prints you want to showcase when you're making a bag. So it's a great um, option. So this this webbing right here, or fabric right here, this is fabric that I covered. And I love stripes handles. I think it's so cute. Um, so that's a great option. Um, I have this bag here. I grabbed all my, all my, all the things totes. So this is a webbing from my shop that's just a cotton webbing. Um, that I used and it works great too. So this is a good time saver if you're like, I don't have as much time to make my own handles. Um, you can definitely use that. So I have uh, 32 colors in my shop of one and a half inch wide. Um, and then I also carry uh, this bold stripe webbing as well. And I think I have about 10 colors of this as well with different different combos of this one as well. So um, there's minor differences in how you construct the bag with a decorative webbing versus like a pre, like a cotton webbing. Um, but the instructions have you covered on that, so you should be good. So that's what I just wanted to talk about the difference, different options you can do for webbing when you're gathering your supplies for webbing. Um, so if you have questions on that, be sure to leave them in the comments and we will... Um, we will go over that. Okay, the next decision you're gonna have to make when you are buying supplies, actually this isn't a decision that you have to really make while you're buying supplies, is the size of bag you're gonna make. I guess when you're cutting, when you're cutting you're gonna have to make this decision. Okay, so I have all three sizes right here that I wanted to show. I'm hopeful that I can show these for you guys. Um, so this is the large, and I shared on stories this earlier this week, this measurement and this measurement are the same on all three sizes of bags. So that isn't something that will change. What changes between the sizes is this width here. It's just a few inches smaller and then a few inches smaller for the small one. So um, that is what you'll have to decide when you want to make these bags and then the other difference between the sizes is that the smallest one doesn't have a stabilizer sleeve in it um, because it's just it's smaller so I, I figured you didn't need as much structure if you wanted to figure out how to add one in you totally could I am trying to think I use a small one I have made one for my daughter and I have used it to carry her Tony box. I don't know if people know what Tony box is and all of her little Tony and her headphones so that if we're like going on a road trip, she can throw that stuff in this. It's a little bit big for that, but it could hold extra stuff too. I also use it as like um, a diaper bag sometimes when I'm like running out, I'll throw wipes, diapers, bibs, 
whatever, all of that stuff in it. So um, that's what I like the small size for. Um, it's a great, like, just like going out tote, right? It's not like giant. So um, someone just asked, is the bag washable with soft and stable? Absolutely. You can throw these directly in the washing machine. I've actually washed, I should have grabbed it. I've washed one of mine multiple times because I use it all the time for my kids. And um, it's completely washable. I usually don't dry it because I don't think it would hurt to dry it, but I just let it air dry. Um, but you can iron right on the soft and stable. You can steam right on the soft and stable, which is what I do when you get a package of soft and stable. It has all those creases. I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, just use your steam iron and the creases will like disappear. It's really magic. It's such a really incredible product. So, okay. And then the medium size. So I'll just show you like the difference, right? This is just, um, a couple inches. I don't even know if you can see. Oh, good. I think you can see a couple inches difference in size from this size to the medium and then to the large. So I have to say that my most made size is the large. I like the large. It's, um, but I have mostly used these for, uh, sewing outings. Like if I have a sewing day with friends, I just pack up everything in it. So, um, I love that. I love that I can just pack up everything in it and it car I carry multi multiple of them. I put my project bags in there and I, my sewing projects and I just load them up and I take them with me. So I like the large. Um, I also like the medium as well. I, I think with the medium and large are my favorite sizes. Um, but the large just holds that much extra. Um, I can fit like my... Um, small I don't know if I have it handy a small like cutting mat I can fit in the large um and then the like some of my rulers like my 18 inch ruler I can fit in there so I like it for that reason as well um okay so the the medium and large bags have a stabilizer sleeve in them so that's the last uh item I wanted to talk about for gathering supplies if you are doing a large or a medium, you might want to grab a stabilizer sleeve. I have these in my shop as well. I know people have done lots of other things other than this. Someone had shared that they used like an old cutting, uh, cutting mat, a cutting board, cutting board, or um, you could use something like a uh, mat board, things like that. You can try other things. I really like the acrylic base and these ones are exactly the size you need and the corners are rounded on them. I don't know if you can see that, which is nice because then they just go in and they don't catch anything. But um, these are by Annie's base stabilizers and the size is the seven and three quarters and 14 and by the 14 and quarters. This is actually because she sells these in multiple sizes for different bags. I was just pleasantly happy when the size worked really great for um, the all the things tote. Um, so this is the only one I carry on my website. So you can grab those there if you want. Um, but the stabilizer sleeve is sewn directly onto the bottom of the bag. And then you'll turn it inside out to add the, not really completely inside out, but that's how you add the stabilizer sleeve in there, right? So um, anyway, so I think, especially for the large and medium, you'll want to have some structured thing in the bottom of the of the bag. So... I think grab these if you're doing those sizes. Um, and any, is there, I know that there's, here, I'm gonna, I'm trying to think. I have one more thing I wanna talk about, but there's been questions that I know I've missed. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about my last thing and then I'm gonna go through and answer all the questions at the end. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to share about is patchwork. If you wanna do patchwork. I've probably had five or six emails this week of people saying, I wanna do um, patchwork. Uh, what? what size square do I need? And I've never made one patchwork, so I don't know. And I have, I have quickly done a little bit of math and I don't think the patchwork works out exactly perfectly for the dimensions of the bag, what the bag is already. Um, and so I kind of am just gonna wing it this time, but I have had, I have had this product in my house for a few years. Um, and wanted to try it. It's the 10 Sisters Easy Piecing Grid. And there's multiple sizes that you can get in this. I got, I think this might be the largest size. I'm not exactly sure if there's a size bigger. But these are for two and a half inch cut squares. 
um, and you just iron them onto this and then you like, I'm going to share this week. I'm going to share this week about, about how this product is used, but this is what I'm going to try. And one of the reasons why I'm excited to try this for patchwork is because I think having an extra layer of interfacing on the fabric and then quilting it to either batting or soft and stable will give some really good structure to the bag because it's just extra, it's extra state, like extra layer, right? Um, and so I have decided to, um, I went through my charm packs this morning because I was like, oh, I could use a charm, cut it in, in quarters and um, use this for a tote. So I think I'm going to start out, so I'm using a Melody Miller's Flowerland fabric. So I pinned these on, I haven't ironed them on yet because I'm not exactly sure my placement, but I just kind of wanted to show what you like you'll iron these on right onto um the interfacing and then you'll sew them anyways i'll show more about that later but um i just wanted to give this as an idea an option um for patchwork so right now my plan is to do this the body of the bag in patchwork and then i may do the end panels or maybe just the pockets i might play around with that as far as the patchwork goes, depending on how much. I only have two charms, so I'm not exactly sure. I will report to you, though, the whole process on uh, how it all works and comes together, but um, you can definitely check out that product. Um, I was chatting with Carmen, who is the one who developed this product. She actually dropped this off to me yesterday, which was so generous of her, because I had one and a half inch, and I wanted two and a half, and she was like, I will swing some by for you. So um, she was telling me on her website she has a store locator, so you can see if any of your local shops um, have carry it. And I have been debating on whether to put it in my shop as well. So if you're interested in getting this, let me know and we can just like carry it in the shop because I think it would be fun for some patchwork bags. Um, okay, that is all I have to share today. So if you have questions, please let me know. I'm going to pull my phone down real quick and go through um, all the questions, see if I missed anything, um, because I wanna make sure I get everybody's questions answered. So be sure to leave your questions if you have them before we hop off. Uh, this will be saved so you can watch the replay. Will, okay, I got that one. Love the stripe webbing on the Tula fabric. Okay, everybody is loving this Tula fabric. So this is, again, the new neon Everglow striped fabric that I made into handles. What do you do if you already had one yard pieces quilted professionally before cutting? That's great. Just cut out your pieces. Um, if you're referring to if it's a directional print, um, I have I have done that where you can just cut two pieces out of the, the, the two half pieces and then I butt them together and I have zigzagged them together and I just made a fabric facing over it. So if you happen to have forgot to um, piece your directional fabric before you had it long armed, you can do that method. And what I did as well is on the bottom, I just added an extra layer of this, um, where did my webbing go, my handle webbing? I totally did this once too, where, where I just sewed this on the bottom because I thought it gave extra structure. So um, that's some tips for that directional fabric. What do you do if you already have to be, okay. Ask that question again. Someone said they like soft and stable better. I love soft and stable. Can you use a fusible interfacing? Uh, you can use a fusible interfacing. I don't think it's going to be as structured. So I would definitely recommend like a foam interfacing for the body of the bag. Okay, this will be very fun to make. Oh, I hope you guys enjoy making it. Do I use SF101 along with soft and stable when using cotton fabric? I don't, I don't usually, not, not normally, but I am going to be doing this patchwork one where I'll probably use, I think I'm, I think I'm gonna do soft and stable cause I just like it. I've, I've considered doing batting on my bags, but I just know for this particular bag, I think other bags batting is great, but this particular bag I'll probably still do the interfacing on my patchwork and the soft and stable. Uh, what do you do if you already had two one yard pieces? Okay, I, sh I went over that already. I loved having my yardage quilted by you 
11 totes later. Uh, I love it. I love it so much. Two Terrier Studios. If you guys go follow her on Instagram, she made 11 All the Things totes for Christmas. And I did quilt a lot of the fabrics for her. So it makes it just easy. So in regards to long arm quilting, real quick, if you are having a long arm quilter quilt fabric, um, I would recommend sending more yardage than what you think you need because usually they have a minimum. So I have a minimum charge on my machine, like size-wise minimum. So you have to send at least a yard and a half, um, a yard and a half, one and a half yards of fabric to meet the minimum. But I do also think, or, or what, how I do it personally, is if you send like a yard and a half of the lining or maybe a yard and three quarters, just a little bit extra, and you want like different pieces quilted, that still counts as the minimum. And I can do different designs and float the tops, the different um, main fabrics. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, where do you get the rolls of soft and stable from? So I get my rolls directly from byany.com. Definitely, right, directly from the supplier. Um, oh, I'm glad the tips have been helpful. That's so great. Okay, let's see. Very pretty decorative striped webbing. I love that webbing. It's It's been such a fun one to carry in the shop, the, the striped webbing. So it's definitely, there's fun colors too. They, they are... They were designed by Anne from Stitch Supply Co. And I think she worked like with the Ruby Star colors. So they're very, very good matches to Ruby Star um, fabrics if you're using Ruby Star. Okay. Do I use extra? Okay. People have been asking the question multiple times. Okay. I bought all my supplies before, but have never made it. Now is the time. Thank you for doing this. Oh, you're welcome. I'm so excited. You know, we have 12 or 1200 of you signed up to do this. So I can't wait to see your bags. And will the stabilizer fit both the medium and large? Yes. The same size stabilizer I use for both the medium and the large bags. This. So this is a little bit too big for the small. All right, let's see, okay, can you make the bag and later decide you want to use a stabilizer or do you have to decide at the start? Um, like a stabilizer sleeve. I think you could probably add it after, but it would just be tricky to um, fit that under your machine, but I bet you could I don't know. You're going to have to just see if you can fit it under your machine. I think you could hand sew one in, maybe. Um, where did you get the pattern and fabric requirements, please? All right, so I have a post in my feed that has the dates of the sew along. And if you comment sew along, it will send you a link to the newsletter sign up. And then in that is a discount code for the pattern, but you have to sign up for the sew along to get the discount code for the pattern, but it will link you straight to the pattern. So find that post in my Instagram feed. I also have a direct link to sign up in my uh, link tree in my bio, so you can go there as well. Can you add the stabilizer sleeve at the end? It's going to be more difficult to add the stabilizer sleeve after the bag is already made, but I think you could maybe fit it in and maybe hand sew it in. But I think, I think if you're going to put some structured base in the bottom, you'll want to add it. And I had people to, like, if you wanted to match the lining fabric, just cut it out of your lining, by extra lining fabric. So that um, if you, I, I thought the accent would be fun to have a little bit showing in the lining because you can see so much of the lining fabric. But I've had people say, oh, I want add a quarter of a yard extra to your lining or your lining fabric if you want to use that base stabilizer you want to cut your base stabilizer sleeve out of the same fabric as the lining okay um where do you buy soft and stable by the roll uh i get mine directly from the supplier by annie.com so you can buy a roll from her as well i added the stabilizer sleeve just in case i want to have a stabilizer sleeve but don't actually have a stabilizer and it works great okay good point so if you don't want to buy this yet or if you don't know for sure if you're going to use it you can add the stabilizer sleeve and then um decide if you want to use it or i just remembered i've made a bag that has like a false bottom so it had like an enclosed stabilizer sleeve you could figure out how to do that and then just throw it in the base of your bag too i like that it stays in place when it's a sleeve like that it's sewn to the bag and you can do it but you could definitely make like a false bottom type stabilizer sleeve um someone just said that what if you made a stabilizer sleeve so it could pop in and out 
of different bags. Yep, you could totally do that. That's a great idea. And I would just double the width and then you could make it like a little pocket, right? You could just make a whole pocket. So this could fit in a pocket so that it could be seen. And then, but it is easy to pop out in and out if you're gonna wash or launder the bag. Okay, I love this pattern. It was easy to add extra pockets on the inside. That's also a great point as well. Um, I've seen people, let's see if I can put my camera, add pockets on this. You can add a pocket here if you wanted an inside pocket because this is just open inside. I should go over that. Two pockets on the, the sides, two big pockets. Honestly, I haven't um, felt like I've needed more pockets for the purposes I've used it yet, but I know people love pockets, so it would not be hard to add pockets on the inside of that as well. And then someone just said, Sarah said, I added purse feet to the bottom of my all the things tote, made it look so put together. I love that idea too. Um, I had somebody email me this week asking if they could use leather handles and use the brads. And I think that that would be like a really sophisticated way to, to like add detail to your bag as well. I've never done that. I have, I have the brads and I have some leather, um, but I've never done it. So I'll have to try that one of these times. Um, also another thing, I don't even have a bag here that has a label but the labels have been like one of my favorite things in the last year to add to my projects I'm trying to think if I have any labels anywhere that I could show you but I don't think I do but um I have lots and lots of labels in my shop uh I just started carrying Sarah Hart's labels and Kylie and the Machine labels and then I have a few that um I worked with a designer to design to carry in my shop too the made with love ones so all right, I finally ex I'm excited to finally make this bag. I received this pattern in the Stitch Supply 2022 Advent Calendar. It was that was when the pattern launched was in the Stitch Supply Advent Calendar. It was so fun to be a part of that project. So, um, yeah, I hope that everyone that got it will be able to use it for that as well. Okay, I think that's it. So we went about 30 minutes. I think that's um, a long enough video. So I'm gonna. Uh, log off, but I'm so happy to have you all sewing along and uh, leave questions after I post this, leave questions and hopefully we can um, get all your questions answered. The email is going to go out directly following this because I'm going to link this in the email and that's the format following um, the, the next few lives so that you can have the link directly to rewatch it. Uh, do you do sew alongs for other bags? Uh, I have plans. I hope to do more sew-alongs for other patterns that I've not done sew-alongs for of my patterns this year. So we'll see the bandwidth that we can <laughs> um, manage this year. I hope so. I hope so. I'd love to do some of the other patterns that I have that we've never done so long. So anyways, have a wonderful weekend, everybody, and I will uh, catch you later.